Hey you guys, one of the questions I'm asked the most is what surfaces you can decoupage on? And so um, one of the questions I was asked earlier this week is can you decoupage on glass? And the answer is absolutely. So today we're gonna do some projects. I'm making um, a new wall, a new gallery wall. And so um, I'm gonna share with you guys what I'm working on and it's going to involve decoupaging on glass. Hey, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Recycled Treasures, and I am super excited about today's project. So, let's I went to Dollar Tree, you guys, and I scored these um frames and I like them because they are legit like all glass right there's no wood frame or anything like that so I just think they're gonna look super modern and really fresh on my wall so what my plans are is to decoupage the back of the glass and then use iron orchid design transfers on the front of the glass I think it's gonna be a really cool way to create dimensional um, artwork for my wall I have several recycled decoupage designs here, you guys. I haven't made up my mind exactly which one I want to use, but I will by the time we get there. So this is, they're both project blocks. And so recycled decoupage paper is really accessible, meaning their price point is generally between $6 and $7.50 per sheet. And so with the project blocks, you get multiple projects in one piece of paper. So this is my um, topography project block, which you can see there are five different panels on here that I can use in different projects. I'm thinking about using the music sheet, but I haven't made up my mind yet. Although I'm really digging this clock. I, I can't never make up my mind now. And um, my other one is an industrial project block. I usually try to make really pretty stuff because I know you guys really like that, but today, you guys, I'm creating this for me. I'm sorry. I love industrial. So this is my industrial project block. And so I'm really thinking about using um, this one or, 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 or this one. I don't know. I'll make a decision before we actually get started. And so I'll be using decoupage paper. I'll be using Wise Owls chalk style paint and Antique Via. And I'll also be using Wise Owls satin varnish today. We'll also be using Wise Owls glaze. This is a mixture, my favorite mixture, 50% Java, 50% black walnut. And I mix it into a bottle to create this, um, my favorite color of glaze. But I am like bonkers about a good halo. And so we'll be doing that today to create a halo on the project that I'll be working on. Um, and I think those are all the supplies um, that I have on my list. So let's get started, you guys. So to start our project, I'm gonna take these little clips. There's just some simple clips on the back of here. So I'm gonna remove those clips so I can get access to the back of this um, glass panel. So all I'm gonna do is I am going to decoupage this. So I'm gonna put my product down first and then put my paper. Which paper? I guess I'll have to make a decision right now. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Um, I think, look, I designed these. I probably shouldn't say how excited I am, but I really love all of the details in this design. Um, and I love working with the Iron Orchid design transfers over darker finishes, um, because I think people believe they can only use them over light um, paint finishes. But the transfers stand up really well, even on a dark surface. So I am just gonna cut out this one um, project panel and I still have the rest of the sheet for other projects. Even this sheet is still a lot bigger than this small project. So I have to decide what I want to show. And I think I wanna make sure my hummingbird is in there and my creepy hand, cause you know, it is almost October. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some Wise Owl's Satin Varnish on this piece. And when I'm working with glass, I try to be really cognizant of laying my varnish down really evenly. And I don't wanna put a ton because I don't wanna have bubbles underneath my finish. So I'm gonna wrap that in Saran Wrap and see if I can use this um, and reduce the friction so I can push out all the bubbles that are in my piece. So I have my glass here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put um, my Wise Owl varnish right over the glass. 
and I'm using the varnish because Wise Owls varnish is made with crystal clear resins and so I know that this um, varnish is going to be crystal clear and it's not going to yellow over time. Now I'm doing a quick decoupage on this project but if you guys want a more detailed tutorial on how to decoupage be sure and check out this video. It's a really simple decoupage um, tutorial and it shows you all the steps to getting like really good decoupage results. And look to the side and make sure I have coverage everywhere. And then I'm actually gonna lay my paper down because I want it to show through the other side, not this side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my craft dryer to dry this really quickly. Now I'm working with glass, so this craft dryer gets pretty warm, so I'm gonna be really careful. I'm gonna dry this, but I don't want my glass to get too hot because I don't want it to break. Now that this is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. The way that I trim my decoupage is I use a sanding block, or you can use sanding paper, or if you have a nail file. 220 grit is my absolute favorite. You can use a 300 grit, it'll just take you a little longer. A 180 grit is a little, the grit is a little too big and you risk like ripping your paper, unless you're looking for a tattered look, then that's perfect. Now that that's trimmed, you guys, what I'm gonna do is go around and check my edges and make sure that they're all tacked down really good and so this corner here is lifting a little bit so no big deal just put a little bit more product down and just push that down i'm gonna peek on the other side just to make sure that i don't have like a lot of bubbles usually the small bubbles don't make a big deal but when you're working on glass you're going to be able to see those on the other side so you really want to have as few as possible so look at how cool that is, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and seal my decoupage because before I move on to the front of this piece, I want to do some magical things on the back. I'm gonna be using paint and glaze and I don't wanna saturate my paper. And so I wanna go ahead and seal it first. Um, that way I'll be free to do what I need to do with the rest of my products without worrying about the paper um, getting super saturated. Now I've decoupaged this dark paper on the glass and you guys can see how it's still kind of transparent. So what I'm gonna do in order to make this more opaque is I'm actually gonna paint the back white. So even though I'm working with a dark decoupage paper, I'm still gonna use a light paper behind it and it's really gonna make a difference on how the design pops off of the surface. Your paper is gonna bubble up when you're putting on the additional products, but don't panic you guys. As it dries, it will flatten out. Now that I've painted the back, you can see how much more vivid um, the design looks on the front. It's a lot more opaque and it's not transparent. Now, if you wanted your design to be transparent, you wouldn't have to paint the back. But if you wanted your design to really stand out, this is a really good way to do it. I did wanna do one more um, panel with you guys with a lighter color because I wanna show you something. Now, with this panel, I've used a lighter paper to decoupage it with one of my favorites. And so I'm gonna show you guys how you can create a halo um, behind your paper. Now we've done a video on underpainting your decoupage and you can find that video here. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how I create like a really nice grungy halo on a design like this one. So I'm gonna be using Wise Owl's glaze for this. And um, I keep my glaze and squirt bottles, you guys, because I use a lot of it. And it's just a way for me to squirt out exactly what I'm gonna use and I waste less when I use that. Um, so I'm just using, this is actually an 045 um, Klingon brush that I'm using. And I'm gonna load it with um, glaze. And so I'm just kind of pushing glaze into my bristles and loading it. I love these brushes because they hold like a ton of product. And so I really want to push glaze into the feathered part of my brush so that I have enough for the whole thing. So I'm gonna go around and I am just going to um, dab on this glaze all around the edges. And this is gonna create a really beautiful halo on the front side of my piece. It's like, kind of like contouring when you do your makeup. 
The goal is to not necessarily see the contouring, but to see the results of the contouring. And I'm using quite a bit because it's on the back side. So, you know, you're not going to necessarily see it as readily as you would if you were doing this on the front side. And I think I'm going to leave that feathered right there. That's kind of a nice um, look. And I'm going to go around my edges and just kind of feather them in a little bit. Um, after I've offloaded all of my glaze, I can just kind of go in the inside of um, the area that I've created the halo and just kind of feather that out a little bit. Really lightly, you guys, really lightly. If I push too hard, I'll actually start pulling my glaze up, which is not what I want for this specific finish. And so I'm going to dry this really quickly and then we're going to paint white over it and I'll show you guys exactly um, how the halo looks from the front. I am warming this up just a little bit because I do want my glaze to set. That way when I go over with my white paint, my glaze doesn't move. If you guys like these tutorials and you enjoy the projects that I bring, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you guys can get all the new tutorials that we upload each week. And if you hit the bell, you'll actually get an alert of when we upload a new video. So our next step on this one is to paint this white. And this is Wise Owl's Antique Via that I'm using. It's a chalk style paint. And so I am just painting that over the back of my piece. I want this to be pretty opaque. So I'm putting two coats, one after the other. So I'm gonna shoot this with my craft dryer and get this dry. And then we'll take a look and see how it looks from the front. I love this dryer, you guys. It allows me to speed through my projects like Liggety Split. That's not all the way dry, but that's dry enough, you guys, to see the effect. So you guys can see here how I was able to produce like this really cool grungy um, outline or halo around this piece, which I think really emphasizes this kind of industrial um, grungy style. Now, you guys imagine, I'm working on a craft project today, but if you had a piece of furniture that had glass fronts on them, you could absolutely decoupage on the back and then put transfers on the front. Like, that would be fabulous. So our first piece is dry. So let's figure out what transfers we wanna put on the top. So the transfer that I'm gonna use, or part of the transfer I'm gonna use is this one, and it's the Franz transfer from Iron Orchid Design. I probably use this transfer more than any other transfer, as you'll be able to see. When I open this one, a lot of the pieces are already missing, but it's a huge transfer and you get like a ton of pieces that you can use on um, different things. And so I love ferns. Um, I love apothecary and industrial. And so I use a lot of ferns um, in my projects. And so I just wanted something really bright and green against this black. I think it's going to be fabulous. So I am going to, this fern is huge, right? And it scales to really be used on a piece of furniture, but you can cut off the individual leaves and use them on smaller projects. And that's what I'm going to do today. Okay. So I'm going to roll this up. And even though I'm being careful, it doesn't look like it. I'm just being careful to make sure that the white doesn't separate from the clear so that I can preserve the transfers that are left on that sheet. Um, and so I am really liking this one. I cut those ferns out and then I saw this one. I just want to make sure my sheet, my surface is completely dry. You guys know what transfers, um, you cannot transfer onto a damp surface. So you want to make sure that your surface is completely dry before you start your transfer process. Now, when you get your transfer, each of them comes with a brayer. And so we're going to lay this transfer down and then we're going to rub it on to the glass. And that is how easy they are to use. And I will tell you, transfers love glass. The smoother the surface, the better as far as they're concerned. And so when I lay this down on the glass, it's gonna adhere really quickly. So when you're working with glass and transfers, you wanna make sure that when you sit your transfer down, that that is where you want it to go because um, you will not have any wiggle room in that. I'm gonna have that go up like that. And I'm just going to rub that off with my brayer. And I anticipate that it's going to stick like right away because this glass is a smooth surface. And I'm going to take my um, paper, the back side, and I'm just going to rub this just to make sure I have really good adhesion 
um, or contact between the transfer and the glass. And then we're going to put one small um, fern right here. These are so fun, you guys. And I'm doing something that's industrial and apothecary inspired, but you could absolutely use a prettier recycled decoupage paper and then layer on some florals if that's your style, or maybe you like coastal prints um, better. And so you could lay down um, a different decoupage paper and maybe do something from one of the new seaside designs. That would be fun. The exploration has a beautiful ship in it. You guys can see how you can build something um, that's completely unique to your style and your aesthetic, but I am loving this so far. I think I'm gonna put a butterfly on top of this, but I'm gonna finish this off camera and then we'll be sure and show you a finalized pictures of both designs. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this project today. Just to recap what we've used today, we used recycled decoupage paper, the industrial project blocks, and we've also used Iron Orchid Designs Franz Transfer, and I'll be going in later and I'll be adding elements from um, Iron Orchid Designs Entomology Transfer as well. We used Wise Owl's um, Chalk Style Paint and Antique Via, and we used a satin varnish to actually decoupage our paper on to our glass. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. As always, it's a joy to come on and do these videos and share these projects with you guys. Um, if you like the projects that we do, make sure that you click the button and subscribe. If you want to get notifications of when we upload new videos, then you can hit the bell. Um, you guys can find me on multiple platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, on Pinterest. So if you want to find us there, um, then it's recycled everywhere else. But thank you so much. You guys have a blessed day and hopefully you guys will share your projects. Bye.